I want to get into a lot of the guys that maybe some of them are extremely famous and some of them are a little less so, but they're all icons to, you know, we, to, to us. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and uh, I, uh, last time uh, we worked together, I remember you were telling me about uh, a BB and how nice BB was to you. Yeah, well, everybody, everybody knows that. He's, he's nice to everybody, I mean. Yeah. And he's always been supportive of me. And the first time I heard him was in about 19... I, I met him, I mean, and heard him live. Was, I think, with Roomful in probably about 74, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, or maybe it was earlier. I think it was 72 or 3. Okay. Anyway, we played in Suffolk Downs uh, in, in Boston, opening for him with Roomful. The early horn band, and uh, and he came up to me after the show. He came looking for me. Yeah, and he came walking up to me. Yeah. You know, and, and before yeah. he even introduced himself, he goes, "You know, you remind me of my favorite guitar player, Wild Bill Jennings." You know, and I went like, "I almost shit my pants right there." I well, yeah. like, you know, like. I, 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 <laughs> That's the first thing he said to me, yeah. and he goes, "Hi, I'm BB King." Yeah, you know? yeah. And I'm, you know, I, I, I was just choking, you know. Yeah. But I mean, he's always been supportive and telling me that, you know, what he's thought of my playing, and that I remind him. In fact, one time we were playing at the Lou Jordan, uh, uh, the, the uh, Hall of Fame, the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, mm -hmm. and when they were inducting Lou Jordan. And they had me play, and uh, and they also had BB and a bunch of great artists. But anyway, uh, a after we had played, we were on stage just you know bullshitting some of the musicians, and and BB said, you know, the other night I was sitting on my bus, and uh, and I put in your instructional video, you know, and he goes, you know, and it was just like. All the old guys were sitting around and all playing, and you were playing every one of their styles, and it was just like they were there. Well, you know, wow, and, and, what and, and a and compliment, going, man. And, and he goes, Robillard, I'm talking to you. And I think, I'm just going, <laughs> and, and, and my drum is going, yeah, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> That is one hell of a compliment. Well, that's true, man. I mean, you really... I used I mean, to be. I'm yeah, less now. But. Well, but I'm saying, you know, I mean, there's two guys that I think have the capability that you and Billy Flynn, to me, are the two guys. Oh, Billy. That yeah. just He's really, cool. you guys both really have that capability of of playing the vibe of whoever you're playing like. I, and you the know, tone and, and sound. It, it just takes you years and years of soaking up the music. To me, yeah, I always tell I everybody, listening forever. 90%. It's so much of the time. Yep. Having that, if you don't have yep. that sound in your head, you have to you're have never going to play it. If you Amen. don't have it, like, when you're hearing it, like, it's you doing it. Right. And you can only do that by listening to it a million times. Amen. You know, you know? Amen. and then you don't have to bother once you, if you've got the ability to play, you don't have to bother to learn somebody's thing note for note. Right. You can. You already got the recall. You can play it like, like it's them improvising it. That's right. the thing, you know. I mean, right. I guess not everybody can learn to do that, but I think spending the time listening is. Amen. Where that comes from, plus just having the natural talent, of course. Right. But, but uh, yeah, Billy has always been one of my favorite guitar players. And I was so happy when you called me up the other yeah, day good. Uh, because I'm thinking, oh, you know, I never get a chance to play with Billy. And I know that we think alike. And yeah. it was funny, like in the middle of the first song I said, well, you know, when we started, right. I, I was I was talking to people right. when I ran up there. I didn't even realize there wasn't drums and bass on stage. <laughs> I just sat down and I wouldn't even look around here because it was such a surprise. Right. We just started playing and went, oh, there's three of us up here. And all, <laughs> finally four of us when yeah. Jim came up. But uh, but then that started me to think, yeah, we know exactly the sound and the level and the, 
intensity right. and uh, where where to lay back and like we just fit together like that immediately. Right. You know? Yeah. I, I was just so happy that you know yeah. that that happened. You know. Well, it's interesting because when you play like that, it's such a uh, you know everyone has to be so aware of time to do. Oh that. yeah. You know when you don't have those ba the bass and drums oh, locking yeah. in. It's like everyone really has to be aware of that to make it. I started you know. being like super focused on that and a little scared. And then by the time, uh, you know, by the time uh, Joe cut loose. Right. You know, right. right. And he got really comfortable. Then he it was like he got really very, rocking. Yeah. You know? yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And, and then with Joe Oscar, started, it was the same thing. Yeah. And you and Joe sounded great together. Uh, it was very, well, you it was really know, a fun game. We've known each other just from the Just from the get go, you know, Joe Beard we're talking about. Yeah. And Oscar Wilson. Yeah. yeah. And, the, and oh, that's, yeah. that's who I brought up here on this uh, and Oscar, show. Man. Yeah. First time I heard him, I get, God damn, I want him in my band. I know. <laughs> I know. He can sound like, he, again, he's like vocally what you guys are yeah. on guitar. Yes, he, he is. He really is. He's vocally what you guys are on guitar. Well, you know, when he did the, the Percy Mayfield tune the other night and at the Eureka Theater, it just it kind of wigged me out because, you know, Percy Mayfield has a really distinctive sound to his voice. Sure does. And he pulled that off so good. I mean, and, and the, the way those guys were playing, everybody's playing like super laid back. Right. And it, it was like, wow, these guys actually do it right. You know? Yeah. Like, I, I mean, when I say right, I mean the way, the, in the style. It's like, in the as style. If, yeah. As if nothing ever changed. Right. You know? <laughs> right. Which that's, I and just. It's such a rarity. Now, <laughs> it is it's really such a rarity. a rarity. Yeah. So uh, the other guys I wanted to talk about, because you've recorded with so many people of uh, the old timers. And, you know, I mean, the, the, the albums I think about uh, offhand are the ones you did with Johnny Adams, the Percy Mayfield tribute. Oh, oh yeah. Which is one of my favorite records. Oh, that was. Yeah. That's so much fun. With Walter Washington and you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I think John Cleary, I believe, is on was the Was Cleary on it? Wow. I, it's either okay. him or Dr. John. And I'm yeah. going back as I've Might done, have been both. I've done a few yeah. of those records. Uh, we did the Johnny Adams one of Doc Palmer's songs, and that was Dr. John on all of them. Okay. I think it might have been Cleary on that first one. Uh, mm. and uh, it, But all those albums are just, uh, what a... A great thing to play with Johnny Adams. I'm so glad Scott Billington got, made me the guitar player and Walter too. That was right. so fun playing right. with Walter. Yeah, that's awesome. We made awesome. a good team. Like yeah. another one of those. Don't talk about it. You know, you don't. You don't have to talk about anything. Just right. Like, what keys to tune? In. That's a great <laughs> album, though, man. Yeah, the the other album uh, that's one of my favorites. I remember that just knocked me out when you put it out. Was the uh, I want to say it was 1988 or 89 you did Swing, right? With Scott Hamilton? Uh, 86. Or 86? 85, 85 or 6. Okay. One of those. And stories. I remember we listened to that all the time in the van in 1989 when I was playing with Sue Foley. And we listened to that constantly. Well, you know, yeah, I, that was That's your Jennings band. album in my, yeah, in my yeah, mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That, his band was backing us up on that. Scott's mm -hmm. band at the time, his New York band. And those guys, they're just, they're another one of those bands that play like it is that time period. Right. Although Scott was always aware of keeping up with things, but not necessarily going in that direction, but being aware of what was happening. So you could tell that he was up on, you know, what was happening now. But it, it didn't so much... It only reflected that he knew about it. It didn't reflect in his personal playing, you know. Right. So his whole band was like that. I mean, they they did things stylistically like people did, and no jazz musicians were really doing that at that time. Right. In exactly. The 80s, you know? Exactly. You know? Yeah. So yeah. Uh, they did a wonderful job, and that's a big part of why that record is so good. It's now, is that a rounder? That's on rounder. Yeah. Right. Okay. And the Johnny Adams was rounder. That was Rounder too, yeah. 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 yeah, so you did quite a few Rounder ones, as I recall, early oh. on. You did a lot oh, of yeah. Antones, too. Yeah. I, you did uh, a ton of Antones, didn't you? I did, but, you know, I was just called in to do a session, sometimes just overdub. and and. Uh, was the Snooky in overdub? Snooky that was Brown? overdub. I didn't oh, see Oh, okay. I didn't, All right. I didn't get to play him with yeah. him or, or 
talk to them. Yeah. And, uh, you know, even a Pine Tap one I did has overdubs, but I've done live with Pine Tap too. Right, right. And uh, um, I, I, I did a Kim Wilson album as overdubs. I, I'm trying to think if I recorded any of the stuff live with Kim. I think in his first couple albums, uh -huh. uh, the, the solo Antone albums, the Tiger Man, and I forget the other one it was called. <laughs> I did that all over dubs, and I think I mostly did, I think I did them in one day. Mm -hmm. They finally told me they were going to let me go because it, I was melting in the, the chair. <laughs> I had been in that chair for so many hours. I, I like that two albums were this is in, this is in Austin. <laughs> yeah. Oh in man. Austin. That's brilliant. We did a little bit of live stuff. I yeah. Think. So you never recorded with the T Birds? Oh no, I that did. was live. The, the, yeah. the album. Uh, okay. Uh, walk that walk, talk that talk. That okay. was all live. That's yeah. all live. All right. So it was more of his solo records. Yeah, his yeah. solo records. Okay. Yeah, because uh, he had recorded most of the tracks for both of them at that point so uh and i guess it was some stuff that he wasn't totally happy with so had you uh, re-recorded he had yeah. you re-recorded right okay but, and, uh, and that was fun that was it was really fun because they were all guys i like to play with right, you know? right. <laughs> johnny watson you know right, like right, 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 right. here's another one is uh, you had a great story about lightning hopkins oh, oh. <laughs> up in canada yeah yeah, yeah. You got a good memory. Oh, well, no, you had some great stories. Lightning, I was up yeah. there playing with uh, the uh, the legendary blues band, Muddy Borders. Right, who band. you played with for, what, a year or something? Yeah, about yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. And we were up playing, the Montreal Jazz Festival was going on, but we were playing a small club across the street. And I went over to watch Lightning and, you know, it was unbelievable. It was just him and a drummer, mm -hmm. and uh, which is my favorite way to hear. Oh like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You don't want anybody else in there. No, 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 you don't want him to be throwing bass players. <laughs> sometimes, you know, uh, a bass fiddle can be good because yeah. sometimes you can't tell what changed. The right, thing, exactly. You know? <laughs> He'd love to throw bass players. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, you know, uh, I had just seen Lightning. And we we got a show right after that right. over at the club, so I uh, we get up on stage and I look out and it's Memphis Slim and Lightning Hopkins sitting in the audience. You know, <laughs> going, oh, it better be good, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know. Yeah. So I had just seen Lightning, right? And we start playing slow blues and E, right? right? And so I I just couldn't help it. I started playing Lightning licks. I mean. I just learned them. I mean, they, you know, I mean, I knew them, but I wouldn't maybe normally play them there. But but you had him in his head. Yeah, so yeah. It head. made such yeah. a big impression right. on me. I couldn't think of anything right. else for like the right. Hopkins. <laughs> and so I started playing his licks, and I finished the song, and he's sitting a, like the second row uh -huh. in a tall, small club. Yeah. And he goes, come and make Paul Lennon mad. <laughs> 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 Oh, oh, shit. <laughs> Better bring out some different licks. <laughs> That's right. Better throw some jazz licks in there. Yeah, right. That's great, man. <laughs> that is great. Now, and, and that same day, I got to play with Slim. Uh -huh. Slim came up and sat in. Right. And uh, and I played my Matt Murphy right. thing. You right. Know? And he was. He goes. I got to. I got to take you to France. I got to take you to France. He goes. Uh, 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 what's his name from the Hot Club of France there? Hughes Panassi, I think. Would that be right. his name? Because he is such a fan of Matt Murphy. If I brought you over there, they'd, they'd flip out. i got to bring you over to France. And right. That never developed, but he did want me to come to New York with him because he had a... He sent me a letter to and play. he told me you didn't get it. I didn't get it till <laughs> six months later because oh, I moved. Oh, 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 oh. And... A guy saw my name in the guy that lived at my old address saw my name in the paper, and so he brought it down to Lupo's Club and and you know it's guy this letter came for you how awful and you know and he said you know I, I want you to come play the week with me at uh, Sweet Basil in New York and then he said not much bread and he signed <laughs> it Memphis Slim with the S's and dollar sign oh, that's <laughs> I great. That was the most that's great man. that's beautiful yeah. <laughs> 
The only yeah. money, but you're not going to get it. <laughs> but, uh, hey, I would have played for free. Well, sure, well. man. That would have been something to hear. Um, now, you worked with uh, uh, Jay McShann, at least on oh, one record. Oh, right? many. I, I did, did you? like three or four records. I think three, I think I played with them, and one I produced. Um, and I produced all the ones that I played on, too. Right. Uh, there's at least two or three that I played on. Um, and that was fun. We did those up in Canada with right. my rhythm section and then some added horns from Canada. Right. Uh, and uh, re recreated some of his, of his famous blues, you know, that he did when Charlie Parker was in his band. Right, you know? right. Wow. And he was the best. I mean, Nick yeah, he was the still, sweetest yeah. person. And he was. And he incredible. still had all his chops. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, when he started losing his hearing, his time got a little funny because, you know, you had to really listen to him. Right. It, it might change a little because he can't hear you. you right, know? right. So, you know, so that became, I mean, it didn't really, it was still great, but yeah. you just had to be really aware, you know. But um, but when we when made those records, he was still, he still had his hearing enough that yeah. he was really on top of it. And um you know, he would tell you just great stories. He'd be, he'd be funny, and he he was just a, you know, he had a great sense of humor, and he'd tell all kinds of stories about his band. Yeah, yeah. and the, the bear trap story, and you know, like a, yeah, he had a thing about they got a bear trap, and whoever, when they were on the road, the early band when they were all young guys, whoever went home with the ugliest woman, the next day when they got on. The, to their seat, they have a bear trap. <laughs> <laughs> That's great, man. And then he gave me some band advice. He goes, you know, you know, when when you gotta pay the band, you know, so what you gotta do, you gotta make make a big wad, but put all ones on the outside. <laughs> so, so when you're paying them, you know, they think you all you uh, got a big pot of money, right. but it's all ones, you know. That's great. <laughs> That's great, man. Or if they're looking for an advance or something. Right, you, know. you get creative. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful. The other album, man, that I, that I love is the Roscoe Gordon one he did. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, that, He's, th those were on Stony Plain, as I recall. Yes, this yeah, Stony yeah. Plain, and he was yeah. in great shape. Yes, he was. You know, he was in really good shape. I was yeah. very surprised. Yeah. And uh, one of my favorite things I ever read was he did this ballad for his wife who had passed away right. recently. Right. She's gone, I think it's called. Right. And man, it was so beautiful. And yep. he sang it twice. He did two vocal takes. They were so perfect that I played them together. You know, mm -hmm. like they used to do the double Oh, the double track, track. Double right, track. right, right. You know, but they usually did that on blues tunes. Right. But it sounded so good together. It was so perfect yeah I and mean, he had worked that out yeah. so perfect so i i ended up putting some slide guitar on that and trying right. to make it really pretty yeah. because it, it was such a moving song yeah know. that is a beautiful song yeah i remember that yeah yeah he did great on that album and, and he he was just really full of energy yeah yeah he sure was i got to hear him once and he was he was spectacular we did I want to say 1982, something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, it must yeah. have been great at that yeah. point. Yeah, yeah. We did a, a recording. This guy um, that does mastering of uh, audiophile records, he's got an audiophile label out in Kansas somewhere. I oh, that. yeah, yeah, I know who you're talking about, the Crossroads guy? Chad. Chad, yeah, yeah. yeah. Crossroads. We did, we, right. he filmed us playing with a few people with Carrie Bell mm -hmm. and, and Roscoe Gordon wow. with my band back and everybody up. And there might have been somebody else too. And it was filmed and recorded in like a church. Right, and, right. And That's I'm where he does it. Yeah. What he, if he's ever going to do anything. It was a it. festival. It's called Crossroads Festival. Oh yeah, I guess that's what yeah. it was. But yeah. I, I got the impression that he was doing it to to have, you know, a document. Like, like a, an archive video. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Right. So I hope that comes out. It's well, a, I do too. Be, yeah. Be fun to, yeah. Fun to do. Yeah, that was a fun festival. And he'd see. always get all these old guys yeah. to be part of that. Oh, I think he also had so, Cephas and Wiggins. Cephas and Wiggins, yeah. I think they were also on that same show. 
Right. It was really a nice combination. Yeah, yeah. You'd always get, you know, I'd get a lot of the old timers, which yeah. really made those shows special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was great. I think we ran into, <laughs> I was taking a leak in the bathroom and Little Willie Littlefield was in there. <laughs> <laughs> Jabbering away. <laughs> he was a character, man. Yeah, I didn't get to know him. Uh, I did see him play a little bit at the festival I was on, uh, but I didn't get to see his whole show. But it was amazing. To, I love him. And he could still just, play, man. Yeah, yeah, he sounded great. Yeah. And you didn't hear anything about him for the longest well, time. Well, he was in Europe. Oh, would he, was he yeah. living there? He kind of ran away from home. Wow. Yeah, in about 1980 or something, he went over to Europe and basically just left his wife in the Bay Area and ended up in Belgium for 10 or 15 years. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. But um, how about Lowell? Did you, ever, did you ever do any gigs with Lowell? I did. I did one great gig with Lowell, uh, which was uh, 1990. It was the Chicago Blues Festival, and it was a tribute to T-Bone Walker. Right. And it was... I didn't know he was on that. Lowell Folsom. Um, Roy Gaines? No. Uh, oh, Roy. Um, no, Grady Gaines' band was on it, but Joe Hughes was his guitar player. Okay. There. And uh, 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 Otis Rush. Otis was on it. Yeah. Otis was in right. myself. I think right. we were the three guys. Right. Although the funniest thing happened is that uh, Wayne Bennett showed up. Right. And I, you know, I met him and knew him from Austin, but I, I you know, I never got to spend a lot of time with him. And we started playing like I did a T-Bone jump number thing. It was a big. They did. Grady did a great arrangement of it. It was mm -hmm. you know an old big band thing, and we would swinging like hell and it, it set Wayne off he just couldn't stay off stage so he put his guitar on and came out you know and and so you know of course you know I gave it to him but he started playing and he wouldn't stop and then after that song ended he, he started another song and he wouldn't stop and he couldn't get him off the stage because he was just so you know pumped up so you know? pumped and, it was, yeah. and I was really happy like, but was great. he playing we great? Got, he was, yeah, was, of course he was yeah, he was yeah, playing yeah. unbelievable yeah. but you know but they you know time constraints of festivals right, right. you know so they go okay yeah. how can we get Wayne off you know that's funny man <laughs> they needed the game. <laughs> do you do you know his wife by any chance? No. You know, I, I I had a funny thing happen, and it was when I was I was home, but I was on my, I had to go somewhere, and his wife had called me after he had died, and she was really upset, and she said, "I'm afraid that Wayne's gonna just fade away out of people's consciousness." Yeah. And you know, can you do anything to help? Uh, keep his his name alive, and mm -hmm. and I'll go. I'll do anything I can. I'll talk about him, and and uh, I'll I'll talk about him in interviews, and and you know now I'm thinking, you know I'm in the middle of writing my book, and of course right. I'm going to talk about all my favorite guitar sure, players, and he's definitely one of them. Yeah. So at that point, I wasn't writing a book, so I didn't tell her about that. But well, he is in Summer of Soul, you know. Oh, that's right, he is. Yeah. I saw it. He yeah. backs up Mahalia Jackson. Yes. Yeah. That's right. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. He was a bad one. Now, how about Gate? Gate. <laughs> uh, Gate yeah, Mouth I Brown. Got to, I got to Gate Mouth Brown. You know, he's one of my real idols. And there was a period where he was like one guy I was concentrating on learning his style. Right. And it was right in a period where I played the New Orleans Jazz Festival. Mm -hmm. And I played Tipitinas at the same time with Roomful. Mm -hmm. And Gabe came out and we did Okie Dokie Stomp, the whole arrangement, you know. And I played every note just like him. And he, he, he was standing there next to this woman who happened to be my girlfriend. Uh -huh. And he was telling her, he is copying me. And he, you know, like, and he, you know, so she told me that, of course. And I said, you know, I went, well, over, yeah. I went over and I said, I, I mean it in total tribute to right. you because it can't be any better. So right. I didn't try to change it. I 
try to play every note like you do because there's nobody that can play you know that's right. it that's the best you can play that right you know? and, exactly which how did he, he take it i uh, he, he ended up loving me later but he? i think he still stayed mad at me for a little long <laughs> rob jr did the same thing did know? he he told me at uh, blues awards you're stealing my legs and and, and that, that's after he knew me and sat in with me and that is so loved weird, it that I man. played uh, I'm Confessing and I Love You. He loved that song. He right. played it with me. And, right. You know, but but he just all of a sudden one day, he got, you know, just got a, was in a bad mood and just that started accusing me. I said, yes, <laughs> you are right. I'm I am. you. I, I said, I'm paying tribute to you right. because right. you are the best. Yeah. You know? And, uh, that's so But funny. they always end up being happy that right. you're you doing that. That you're remembering them. Yeah. Yeah. 